messing around with some beginning to intermediate finger picking songs. So I'm trying out a whole bunch of different things. These are some of the things that I'm going to have see the light of day in the near future, I think. So lots of tunes run through there. I certainly appreciate the uh, recommendations that people are asking for some easier finger picking songs. Anyhow, it is Tuesday, April 20th, I think. Yeah. And just a couple quick things about what's been going on around here. Yesterday, we came out with... And I'm not sure if I put all of it up yet or not, but at least the whole the whole intro should be there and the main riff, I think. So I hope everybody's having fun with Jumpin' Jack Lash. And if you don't know the rest of the chords, they're D, A, E, and B. So that should be all you need to know for Jumpin' Jack Flash, in case I forgot to mention that in the, in the intros, riffs, and licks section where that is now. So uh, the other thing I forgot to mention yesterday is a, a great suggestion that we had from a lot of people was that it would be nice to know when you have new messages in your inbox. So that's something that we managed to get taken care of over the weekend. And now there's a little drop down menu that shows up every time you're on a page if you have got new mail or new messages to check. And um, you can check them right then and it'll go, <coughs> go away. Or you can ignore it for a while and, every, and it'll keep popping up and whenever you want to check it, it'll stop, stop showing up. So um, again, kind of a cool feature because I forget to check my inbox a lot. Actually, I forget a lot about my inbox, but that's okay. I, I, at least I, I get to the forum a lot though. So um, I think the last thing for today is the trivia question. <laughs> guys were way on the right track, but some really interesting things about this song. This is Superstar. It came out in the early 70s, actually written in uh, the year before, 1969. Um, and the authors are Leon Russell and Bonnie Bramlett. Now, Bonnie and her husband, Delaney, had a band called Delaney and Bonnie and Friends. And the Friends were kind of a rotating cast of various people. And as you know, from two or three weeks ago, when we were talking about a lot of Eric Clapton stuff, Eric was one of the friends that, that performed with them a lot. And um, one of the other friends was a singer named Rita Coolidge. I'm sure many of you know a lot about Rita Coolidge, or at least some. Rita was a backup singer in the Delaney and Bonnie group. And it was really her idea because of um, a little either crush or event with Eric Clapton to write a song from a groupie's point of view of you know, having uh, spent a little time with a superstar and pretty soon just living with them on the radio. And uh, so Rita spoke to Bonnie about this and Bonnie and Leon put together the song. It did show up, very obscure version. Though, so I wouldn't expect anybody to know this unless you were like scouring Wikipedia or something. But it was on the flip side of a single that never went anywhere for Delaney and Bonnie. I believe it was called Coming Home, something like that. And uh, but Joe Cocker's tour, Mad Dogs and Englishmen, that happened in the early 70s as well, there was also a movie made, featured Rita Coolidge singing this song. So they put this song in the set and Rita sang it. Um, it was Leon's tune. Leon was playing piano on the, uh, on the album. So most, most people, well, I don't know if most people heard this heard it here first, because, um, but that was where it really came out in, in the public. There also was a up till then, unknown singer that showed up on Johnny Carson's Tonight Show a lot, who performed it, Bette Midler. And Bette's performance of Superstar on the Johnny Carson Show caught the ear of Richard Carpenter. Richard thought it was a great tune and wanted to talk Karen into doing it. Karen did not like the song. The subject material, subject matter of this song is not really the Carpenter's squeaky clean uh, kind of song. Richard really twisted her arm into it, and the rest is kind of history. It turned into one of their biggest tunes. So, uh, kind of cool little sideline to the superstar story is that uh, Karen didn't even want to have anything to do with it.
that's the rest of it. So I'll be back tomorrow and uh, hope all is going well. I got to get to work on my finger picking songs. Probably you do too.